What's up, grown up me? How's life? <laughs> do you have a boyfriend? Do you still love Carson McCullers? Are you still best friends with Maxie? Where do you live? Seattle? Paris? Wherever you are, I hope you're doing exactly what you want to do. If you ever get sad, remember that I was thinking of you once. Yeah, I guess it's easier when you're young. Mm. All you need from someone is to feel stupid around him. I had a dream, you know, back then. Uh, I was going to uh, be in a pretty important rock band. What do you need when you're older? You need to feel like you're on the same side of what seems stupid. Are we just supposed to believe everything that's been fed to us from the time we were a little kid to now? I mean, I just want to have a job I'm, I'm good at. And, you know, come home every day to somebody that I love and be good to them. And, um, uh, Maybe go for a hike every now and again on the weekends. Hey! Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Just got was, a customer. Yeah. I got to New York. And uh, I lived down on the Lower East Side. And I went to the Sidewalk Cafe, and there was a waitress there. She's pretty, pretty struck. And she's kind of loopy. I had an edge to her, pretty funny. I don't know, she sort of had my number, you know. I have a job, I don't know if you heard. I got a job that is uh, going great. They like me there a lot. Um, they actually, like, give me a chance, and, uh, really nice to me and I'm doing good there. I miss you. I miss my friend. So I've been thinking about you um, a bit over the last few weeks. Um, I hear what you say about wanting a simple life, but um, I feel like I'm just getting started. I want more. Love is, love is love, no matter who you're thinking of, so you can open all those doors that someone closed so long ago, cause you're bolder when you say, I am through, I am through, room for something to begin. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for this uh, special tribute um, to the life and the work of the great Lynn Shelton. My name is Mark Duplass. I'm Jay Duplass, and um, I fairly recently got to work with Lynn on a project called Outside In that Lynn and I wrote together. Uh, she directed and I acted and we produced it at Duplass Brothers. Um, I had been friends with Lynn for a long time and had witnessed her making many projects with my brother here and was feeling a little jealous and felt very lucky that I got to uh, finally make a movie with her. And I was lucky, like many of you were, to work with Lynn multiple times on films like Hump Day and Your Sister's Sister, and she directed me in uh, countless episodes of, of television. And uh, it was just such a joy to not only spend that time with her, but to witness how much she loves collaborating deeply and how much she loved her actors and her crew members and and how loyal she was to them she would work with people continuously over and over again people like Ben Kasalki and and Vinny Smith and and Mel Eslin and Nat Sanders and and the list goes on and on and on of people who recognize how deeply lucky we were to watch her collaborate and as you all know Lynn loved music and I think she loved nothing more than putting music and film together in that special alchemy. I mean, maybe she loved sing-alongs more, but you, you know what I mean. So as an ode to Lynn's love for film and music and sing-alongs, this program will be a progression through Lynn's films and a few notable TV projects in chronological order. 
An actor from each project will be introducing a musician or musicians who will perform something from the score or soundtrack, and uh, we fully expect you to sing along. And since we are celebrating not only her work, but also her life, um, we really do want to uh, make sure that we honor uh, Lynn as a filmmaker, but also um, as, a, as a member of a beautiful family that included uh, her father, Max Shelton, mother, Wendy Rodell, um, and her other mother, she liked to call her uh, Frauke Rind, and Alan Rodell. Uh, she was a sibling to David, Tanya, and Robert. She was married to Kevin Seal for almost 27 years, a devoted mother to Milo Seal, and, and over the last year had become a creative collaborator and romantic partner to, to Mark Marin. So while we all wish we were gathering here under different circumstances, um, let's all sit back and enjoy, and most importantly, honor Lynn's deep love of music and film. I'm Maggie Brown, and I was cast as Kate at 13 in Lynn's first feature film titled We Go Way Back. Lynn was so warm and kind and just so open-hearted. Working with her was always really fun. I met so many inspirational people working on We Go Way Back, and I have memories from that experience that I just hold really, really dear to me. One thing I remember about Lynn is that she loved music. And when we were driving from location to location, we would always be listening to music, and Lynn would frequently put on Laura Veers. Lynn, it was an honor and a privilege to have worked with you, and I miss you. So now I'd like to introduce Laura Veers playing Riptide, one of her songs featured in We Go Way Back.
the time in my life when this movie happened was like a truly a low point, you know, like my marriage had ended, my first marriage had ended, um, and I had like a herniated disc and I looked the, I mean, like objectively the worst I have ever looked, uh, which is nice for your first and likely only starring role in a film. But um, it was more than made up for by the fact that Lynn was like genuinely interested in in mining this low point for something meaningful and something true and something that she believed in and that made me believe in it and in myself and um, whatever the merits of my effortless brilliance are um, and I believe there are many it is also the birth of the thing that she was you know rightfully kind of celebrated for which is that her sets were like this magical, you know, utopian haven where people are like collaborating on vegan stew and like braiding each other's hair. It was like a, a fun, great time that you never wanted to leave. And if we hadn't been out in the goddamn woods, I probably never would have left. Um, but anyway, now Ted Speaker is going to play a selection from uh, his, uh, his score from my fearless brilliance. My name is Joshua Leonard and I played Andrew in Hump Day. Um, back in 2008, my friend Mark Duplass called me and asked if I wanted to come make a movie with him and his friend Lynn Shelton. I loved Mark, so I immediately said yes. And then once we started getting into the collaboration, I began to get really nervous because this Lynn Shelton person was way too nice and she was way too enthusiastic. And that convinced me that there was no way that she could be good at her job. The set barely felt like work. We laughed all the time. It was collaborative, it was loving. Um, it was like family. And, and at that point I was absolutely convinced that Lynn wasn't talented because making a film had to be way harder than that. And then she sent me a rough cut and, um, and it kind of blew my mind. I loved that film with my whole heart from the first time I saw it. I found it to be funny and true and deeply human and, um, <laughs> and somehow miraculously I had become a better, more honest actor than I ever had been in it. And 
and that led me to this big realization that um, that some of my core beliefs about being a person and making shit were probably pretty bad. That you had to have friction in order to create good art, that you had to be skeptical in order to be taken seriously, and that kindness equated to weakness because Lynn Shelton was nothing if she was not kind. And anybody would tell you that. And lots of people probably have. Lynn directed the way that she lived her life as a deep and pure enthusiast for people's best potential. She really had the ability to love you into being your best self. I miss her a lot and I learned so much from her. And next up we have Vinnie Smith and Lori Goldston performing a song from Hump Day. Hi, my name is Kevin Murphy. I play in a Seattle band called The Moon Doggies. I met Lynn through um, when she was making Five Dollar Cover. She was kind of coming up with um, different stories, interviewing all the musicians, and I met her through my friend's band, The Lights. And so um, we met up for coffee and just talked for a couple hours and just immediately hit it off. Since then, through the years, we were always close and became a shoulder to cry on and call me during hard times and um, just a beautiful, wonderful, loving soul and actually ended up really making an impact on the Seattle music scene through this project because all the different bands, are, their stories are interwoven, but it was through this project that a lot of us ended up meeting and um, forming bonds. And her and I used to sing music together, and um, she'd always stand up front, and then eventually made her way onto the stage, and we sang a song together. Um, but this song is uh, called Old Hound. This is one that um, she liked, and uh, so now uh, I recorded it, and Megan had some of the $5 cover people do, the, uh, do some singing with me, so. I uh, hope you enjoy. All right. It was love 
Dylan Shelton. unspeakably beautiful she was, but just what a effervescent spirit she had and fabulous, raucous, infectious laugh and and I felt really safe with her. You 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 did just feel immediately very safe with Lynn because of the goodness of her spirit. Which you kind of needed because working in that way, that freewheeling, uncharted territory with no script. It felt kind of boundaryless and, and daunting at times, you know, revealing and exposing. And, and, and that's the beauty of what she captures, is it's so intimate, it's so human, it's so awkward. And you needed a great spirit like Lynn to not let you feel untethered during the course of the process. And she was so interested what you would bring, what would unravel for you. She was sort of so excited by your own discovery. So it was just really rewarding. It was just the kind of work at the end of the day that you kind of lay there in bed and go, what just happened, you know? What did I just do? And then you realize that that's what she's capturing is real life. It's just real life, real humanity. And, and her genuine intrigue in it is the reason why she's able to capture it so beautifully. So it's sort of unforgettable being with her and Rosemary and Mark and our wonderful crew, Orcas Island, for 12 days, we made a movie in 12 days, I mean, never experienced anything like it, it was just thrilling, really. And it's just such a loss to not have her around anymore because she was so light, it's what everyone loved about her, just so completely alive with so much left to show the world and so she will be so greatly, greatly missed and I'm so grateful that I got to breathe the same air as her and make something extraordinary with her. It's really just unforgettable. Um, so I'm going to introduce um, a song that actually was in your sister's sister. It's called Playing Dead and it's by um, 
Breathe out, breathe. One, two, three, four.
Hi, I'm Rosemary DeWitt. To know and work with Lynn Shelton was to feel seen, cherished and valued for your whole self. Those are the qualities of a great filmmaker and also the qualities of a great mother. At times she felt like a mother to us all. She was a mother to the magnificent Milo Seal, who was the love of her life and the greatest legacy that she leaves behind. We're really grateful to Milo for sharing Lynn with us. I'm here to sing the staggeringly beautiful song Horses from Touchy Feely is the talented musician and actor from the film, Tomo Nakayama, who asks, is it a blessing or a curse to be found? I think that Lynn would say it was a blessing. Is it a blessing or a curse to be found, to be found? Is it a burden or a gift to be bound, to be bound? Are you a call or a tie to my run on sentence? Or it was just a word? All those doors that someone closed so long ago Cause you're bolder when you say I am through, I am through Room for something to begin Hi, I'm Reese, and I want to talk a little bit about Lynn's um, television work because that's how I met Lynn. I met her on the set of The Morning Show, and I was really excited to work with her because I was a big fan of her work. Um, I just remember her like, walking on set, and she was in the middle of directing a scene, and there were six cameras going because it's a television uh, production studio set, and then there were 
easily 50 extras and eight principals on camera. And she just was completely at ease. And it was like, she had done this a million times before and I was really struck by her confidence. She just always worked so well with everyone from the actors to the camera department to the crew. She was always asking me what we could do to cheer the crew up. Um, she and I got on this kick where we wanted to bring baby goats to the set of Little Fires Everywhere and that's all she and I could talk about. And uh, we weren't able to because of codes, but um, I just, I loved her free spirit. And um, and I want to say that Lynn, when we were on Little Fires, the finale scene where the kids burned down the house, we had to really work together to um, choreograph the performances of the teenagers. And Lynn just took time to concentrate on each kid and their performance and make them feel safe. And then when it actually got around to me, I realized I felt so safe with watching her process with the kids that I felt free to be extreme, to, to do uh, something wild and then something subdued. And I will say that's my highest compliment I can give of any director is that she made me feel free. And um, I will miss her a lot. She was a wonderful human and a vibrant, alive, free-spirited, talented, funny lady and um, a very dedicated mother. She talked about Milo all the time and what motherhood meant to her and, and what it meant to, to be able to talk about themes of motherhood in her career. Um, it's just incredibly devastating and my heart goes out to everybody who loved Lynn, who spent time with Lynn, who watched Lynn's movies. Her legacy is alive with her films and in our hearts. Hi, my name is Betty Gilpin, and I worked with Lynn on many episodes of the TV show Glow, um, a show that she really helped uh, find its voice and weird, wonderful tone. So much of that was um, Lynn's fault. <laughs> and uh, she was one of the first female directors I've ever worked with, which is insane. Um, and I realize now how lucky I am that... Um, she was one of the first women I saw run a set because her talent is so unique. You know, um, a set is full of many opposing personalities with uh, seemingly opposing jobs to do. And she just always had a sort of brain language Esperanto <laughs> for uh, every single person on set from uh, kid glove needing adult baby actors to, um, you know, people who have to think in math and watts and feet of cable and she just knew enough to be dangerously good at every aspect of the job and uh, we were doing reshoots of a scene that was a big scene and I wasn't getting there and she came over and um, she said something, whispered something so devastating to me <laughs> about the character and um, I, we did another take and I totally lost it and she's like, cut, okay, great. Um, yeah, we needed tears on your face just for continuity from the first time we shot it. Okay, let's all go home. And I was like, you Jedi'd me into getting everyone home to their families. God, you're good. <laughs> she was just, you guys know, she was the best. And I'm so honored to have known her and worked with her. Uh, I have the honor of introducing now the GLOW composer, Craig Wadron. Um, take it away, Craig. This is dedicated with a great love and a heavy heart to Lynn from me and my co-writers, Lara Myratkin and Bo Body.
Hi, uh, this is Jeff Garland. Um, I worked with uh, Lynn Shelton on the film Laggies, and I think that a lot of people today are uh, talking about um, working with Lynn. And I enjoyed very much working with Lynn, and uh, the thing that I bet you is running through all of this is her love for actors, her crew, her love to be on the set. And that's where I first met her. I met her on the movie Safety Not Guaranteed, of which she was not employed. I found out later that it was her crew, primarily, and she just loved being on the set. She loved all of it. That was 
truly, it's fun to see in a person that their skill and their passion are the same thing. So I have great memories of working on laggies, great memories, but what really sticks with me is working on Safety Not Guaranteed and watching her every day contributing because she wanted to be part of it and she missed not being with her crew. Kind of remarkable. Um, I've not been able to talk about this much. Um, I feel for all of you because um, she was special. Um, and now, and let me, I'm about to introduce Ben Gibbard. Well, there, I introduced him, but don't go to him yet. Another time, just her in her joy. We, were, we had screened laggies at the Arclight Cinema here in Los Angeles in Hollywood. And as the movie was over, uh, I found her sitting in the front row before the Q&A, sitting in the front row, singing along with Ben's song. To a song that I know she'd heard at that point hundreds of times. She was just so happy, so happy doing what she loved. She was really blessed by that. I was blessed to know her. All right, Ben Gibbard, and thank you. Hey, you guys. Uh, my name is Ben Gibbard. I uh, had the privilege of working with Lynn on the movie Laggies. Uh, I had been a fan of hers for a number of years before we worked together, and I kind of... Uh, gathered up the courage to uh, procure her email from our mutual friend, Sean Nelson, and basically write her a fan letter and uh, tell her how much I loved her films and that if there was ever an opportunity to work together, I would love to do it. Um, and she wrote me back, and we went out for coffee, and I just immediately fell in love with her and thought she was the most amazing person, one of the most amazing people I've ever met. And... Uh, she told me about this movie that she was working on and, um, and offered me the job of scoring it, which was kind of my first time ever doing something like that. <laughs> uh, but she had faith in me and um, she was gentle and kind and very encouraging when I misstepped. And uh, towards the end of the process, she uh, asked if I might have a song for the end credits. And in fact, I had written one around all of the music that had been used for the score. So uh, this, is the, this is that song, and it's, uh, it's called It's Never Too Late. Never rest, it flows. 
flows through you and me We are the clouds above We are the deepest sea So don't ever say that it's too late to cure your lonely heart Don't ever say that when it breaks it just feels shattered apart Don't ever say that it's too late to cure your lonely I'll never forget Lynn as, as long as I live, and uh, I'll always be grateful for her guidance and friendship, and yeah, I'll miss her forever. Bye. Hi, I'm Caitlin Deaver. The second time I got to act in one of Lynn's films was for her movie called Outside In. I was so so excited to get to work with her again and when she told me about the idea for the first time she wanted to go on a walk with me in Santa Monica so she told me to meet her at the Whole Foods and then she texted me more specifically and said meet me at the rutabagas which I don't know thinking about that just always makes me laugh I mean the best part about making movies with her was that she made everyone feel like they were at home and everyone was always on the same team and having so much fun and seriously laughing all the time and that's what made making Outside In so so special was that she put all of us together and made us feel like we were at home. She even wanted us to stay in this house together while we made the movie in Washington State just so that we could get to know each other better and it just felt like we were living in our perfect little world and I am forever grateful for that experience she gave me and I think that's why Outside In was so, so incredible. And I think that's what makes all of her filmmaking so special and magical is that the love she gives to everyone really bleeds through every shot. So I want to introduce Andrew Bird, who is going to perform a beautiful song from the film Outside In called By Any Means. I love you, Lynn.
Hi, I'm Michaela Watkins, and I wanted to talk a little bit about Lynn and what it was like to work on Sort of Trust, um, because it was one of the most exhilarating improvisational experiences I've ever had. Um, I've never done a full-length feature where there was that much improv, and yes, there was this you know, scriptment that she'd written with Mike O'Brien, but really it sort of was this magical collaborative experience where we were guided by um, our, our leader, who was sort of the only person who held the key to what the actual specific tone of this film was. And it is a very, very specific little tone. It's like the little needle has to come down on the record just right to re really make it sound right. And she knew what that was. And so here we are all kind of flying blind, jumping in with each other. It was just so exhilarating. It's a little like that game operation where you have to reach in and pull a bone out and if you hit the sides of the walls um, and you know you, you get like a little electrical zap. And that's a little what it felt like because she knew where the walls were, but we didn't. So we would just be, you know, bringing all this stuff to it and then she would be like, eh. <laughs> and you're going, oh my God, no, I, I ruined your movie. But then when you hit the chord just right, she would just burst into tears and come up and hug you and go, I love you so much. And it's because we hit the note that she heard. And speaking of tone and notes, um, she always has this beautiful score playing in so many of her movies that really make and break uh, the emotionality of her films. And they're so deeply personal and the music is so incredibly moving to me. And I've always been so impressed by that. So it was really no small compliment when she asked Mark Marin to do the score with his blues uh, guitar. And she just knew that was exactly the sound that it needed to be. And um, and what a, what a compliment to be asked. And boy, what a leap he made to, to actually do it. Um, he's never done anything like that before. And he did not disappoint. So uh, I present to you Mark Marin. I'm not a musician. Um, I worked with Lynn on a lot of stuff. I loved her. I love her. And um, I miss her. And uh, these are... This is a, a, a kind of a couple of riffs I did. She liked the way I played guitar. She liked the way I did a lot of things. And because of that, I did them better. I fucking miss her, and I know you all do too, but this is uh, just a guy who plays guitar playing um, for Lynn.
all miss you, Lynn. I love you. We all love you. Oh, 